wait. And um, so today's, today's tutorial is um, is about uh, um, like um, rag augmented chatbots or uh, which are retriever augmented. Um, uh, rag is a uh, let me just start like share my share the presentation and this. Talk okay, about this. So, as we mentioned, like last time, if you remember, like when we were talking about, I uh, mentioned uh, like define the chatbots. We mentioned that there is a possibility to have a retriever part. The retriever part is uh, is um, basically you are uh, when you're passing your prompts to uh, an LLM. Um, instead of just passing the question, you go. You want to pass also like relative information for within the prompt for for um, for the LLM to 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 use that information to answer the question uh, or to provide information. And uh, that part is called this is called drag or retrieval augmenting generation. And you can also implement it, of course, uh, in the context of, of having a chatbot. So it's going to be a rag, um, a rag bot or rag chatbot. And um, like uh, the discussion today is going to be about that in general, but also we are going to be focusing on the vector data database, which is a particular, a very important part of this system of having this uh, um, retriever augmented um, generation. Okay, so um, so this is going to be like um, uh, you will be getting more and more about. So uh, for this challenge, for this week's challenge, might, you might not be like uh, this is like your first Gen, Gen AI challenge, and um, you don't necessarily need to use a vector database or RAG but uh, this is going to be like much more relevant in the next uh, the upcoming uh, gen ai uh, gen ai um, challenges so like so let, let's consider this like, some kind of an introduction on this uh so um so the content of this presentation is going to be talking about like uh, briefly again um i said it in words but let's i will again describe the Retrieval augmented chatbots or rag bots. Um, and then we're going to talk about the retrieval augmented generation components of uh, this system, uh, how, what is called, um, made of. There are basically three things. You have to get your data, the relevant data, into a database, um, so is a vector database. And then you have to have a retrieval system that's the one that will get you the information relevant to your query. And the last part is the generation, of course. This is that just when you pass the prompt to the LLM and it's going to, to create, um, to give you, like, generate some answer for you. And then we're going to discuss a little bit more about database and there are these concepts that are related or um, involved there. Okay, so uh, if you remember um, two days ago, uh, we talked about how, like, uh, the like the system of a chatbot looks like. Um, uh, passing, you remember, like passing. You start with a question, and you pass a question to, like, you create a prompt from that question. So this is a question coming from the user. You pass a prompt, uh, you generate a prompt. You pass it to the LLM, and you get an answer. But once you get an answer, you you store this in a memory. And then uh, if there are like uh, follow up questions, this is the prompt is going to be made from the memory of the conversation and as uh, a new questions and then this part. So this is the chatbot part. We discussed that there is a retriever optional part where the question itself is passed to a storage where you have some relevant domain specific data. Um, so if we like uh, think about this chatbot is some assistant for your organization, uh, your business, and like uh, you, you want like users or visitors to, you, to your website to ask questions about your products and your services, then you have all of this information about your product and services in a storage, because of course the LLM doesn't know about them. Um, 
you know, LLM has general information, but it doesn't have information about your business. It might be also like, uh, maybe it's like sensitive information. You put that in a story. When a user uh, passes, a, like um, ask a, qu a question, the system is going to pass that question or that query to the storage and get retrieve some relevant data from the storage and that is, is going to be passed together with the query as a prompt to the LLM. So the LLM is going to answer the question based on the information that is given from here. So in a RAG, so um, so this is what we're talking about. This was a chatbot. This is also optional, but if it becomes like uh, not optional, if you include this, it's going to have a RAG uh, chatbot, basically. Um, so this is what we, we were describing here. So uh, let's talk about the RAG more. So RAG, or rather retrieval augmented generation, is uh, as described is a technique that you want to or a system you build you where you want to be using the capabilities of a learn language models with additional external information um, um so this is done because uh you want um uh, so, like uh, this data is uh, do domain specific, usually, that is, that LLM doesn't know about. So, let's talk about the reasons why. Why to, to let's just specifically, actually, I, I already said some of these, but let's like um, slice them out. So, um, LLMs, these are very big models that are like trained on a very large amount of data, text, and general information that is available on the internet and stuff like that but it doesn't know everything it's not um maybe as a, as like as an example i mentioned you have like a like you have an organization or a business and that information of, of, of this business wasn't is not available for the llm to 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 um uh so maybe so you, if you ask llm about uh, like um general question about a very big business is probably is going to know about that if you ask it about google or something like that but if you want to have intricate uh, um, information about your business, this information is not available to the LLM itself. So you have like, um, if it's not, it's not publicly available data, then you want to provide that to the LLM with the prompt, with the query, so that it can answer the question from there. Another thing is that even when um, LLMs uh, are like, um, the models are usually like, um, um, not always updated, so they might be like uh, like they were trained on data that was available at like uh, some time. So maybe the model was uh, trained on uh, publicly publicly accessed data from 2022, and so any information after that, you it doesn't know about. So it can be outdated. So this is where RAG is going to be useful. Uh, it also can provide domain specific. So if you want uh, your LLM to answer question about particular specified, let's say um, you want it to answer question of legal questions. So you want the LLM to, to have some legal um, uh, knowledge and uh, know about legal terminolo terminology. LLM as itself as is, going to have some some knowledge that's going to be generic to have a really specialized knowledge you have to provide it with a source with with really specialized knowledge so that it can it can like answer queries based on those so uh why this is useful again so of course uh, the thing is that this is like also maybe we discussed a little bit before is that it is possible to actually like uh Maybe you say like, why didn't we train this is specialized knowledge? Why why don't we retrain the LLM with this? But retraining an LLM or fine tuning it with the specialized data is really expensive. So providing it is just as a prompt is cost effective. Um, okay, so uh, this is basically it. Uh, reducing the necrotic responses of hallucinations. Yes. So again, when you tell uh, the rag, uh, sorry, tell your LLM to answer the question based on the provide context, not make up answers. So you can actually uh, put this as an instruction 
and then um, providing the information yourself. If it doesn't know, if it doesn't find the information, it's going to tell you like, yeah, I don't know. So this is like useful for that. And I said again, cost effective because you don't need to fine tune the whole model. We just need to provide the information in a small, like in a relatively, um, in, 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 in the prompt. And uh, we will come later that we have to break down our data because um, if you remember, LLMs have like a, a context window. They can take only like a prompt of a specific maximum size uh, depending on the model, but it ha it's always has like, um, you cannot provide a lot of information just in the prompt. If you have like a, um, a big, big uh, data set, big uh, like size of information, you cannot provide all of it in the in the prompt, so you will have to break it down. But anyway, uh, this will come later. But this is our like the reason for having a rag. Um, so um, going into details like, uh, a bit of of like uh, the components. Okay, so um, there are like three processes that are involved in in like uh, in uh, building and operating a RAG, okay, a RAG system. So these are, yes, okay, excuse me for a moment. Sorry. Uh, okay, so um, so I uh, the rack components are going to be like these are the processes that are involved in building and operating the rack system. So there is the first step, which is indexing, or like it's this is basically just the the step or the process of you getting your data uh, and preparing it to be retrieved, basically. So you're going to be indexing it, ingesting the data and indexing it so that it can be like uh, searched and um, within this rack system. The retrieving is that once the user gives an input, this input or query is going to be taken like, and then it's going to be used to search your, um, uh, your index data, so the source data. And it's given to give you like um, retrieve a part that is relevant to uh, to answer the query, and these two parts are going to be passed together to the LLM in the generating uh, step, which is like is going to take the prompt and give you the answer. This already you know about this, so these are the two new things. Um, so just in more details, um, so let's talk about it here over like, uh, sorry. So this is what we're talking about, uh, what I, I'm calling indexing, or it's called indexing here. So this is just like a, a simple diagram about it. So what, what happens is that you get your data in the, from different sources, different formats. It can be text, it can be um, like, a, a, can be like ready already, or um, data already uh, available, for, uh, like on your device or it can be like a website um all of that you can have a different kind of uh, of data you have to load the data and you have to split your data into chunks because remember that the llm that doesn't take it has a, a limited size for its prompt and this data is going to be passed um later on as part of the prompt. So it has to be broken down into sizes that will fit into the prompt. And it's also because um, you want also to reduce any kind of noise. So uh, think about the, is, is the data when it's, um, a user ask a, like, ask a question, not all the data set is going to be relevant to that question, only a small part of it is probably relevant. And you don't want to pass too much that is like um, 
if you if you don't divide your data uh, at all, you're going to pass like think like uh, forget about the limitation of the prompt. But if you just pass all the data with the query, then um, the LLM is going to be will have maybe a trouble to finding the actual relevant information within this data to answer the query. To simplify that, you you want to pass only like. As much as possible, you just want to pass the small part that is relevant to the query uh, to reduce the noise. So that's why you split the data. These are two, two reasons, two main reasons, to fit in the prompt and also to reduce the noise. After splitting the data, this is very important. You have to embed your data into vectors, okay? So that's what, where it comes. Uh, it's called a vector database because it's, it's, it's storing these vectors. So. Vectors are just numerical representation of your data, as it's just an array of a fixed size. Uh, like your original data can be anything. It can be text, it can be like images, uh, um, like all of these can be embedded into vectors. And these, are, these vectors have represent the data and represent the semantic meaning of the data. Um, uh, because w w like what we are talking about, like I'm, say I'm saying like you want to retrieve the data that's relevant to the query, relevant to the query, that means it's semantically the meaning of the data is relevant to the query. That's how you, like this relevance is measured in this semantic uh, similarity, semantic um, relevancy to, 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 to the query. So you have to, the embedding itself has to include the semantic meaning of the data. So if, if text, um, it can be like word embedding, that the word embedding can be include the semantic meaning. It can be sentence embedding as well. You can also like embed the whole, each chunk into just one, well, sorry, it's always exactly that. You embed all, every chunk into one vector, and this vector has to like uh, encode the meaning, basically, of the, of the data, and then, the the last part is that going to store these vectors that created or created into this uh, specialized database. So this vector database. Okay. This is the first. Like this is the indexing part. The retriever. Um, okay. So just talking in details about this. This is the chunking. As I, this is what I already said. Uh, like why you want to break down your, your data into chunks because like the context window, the limited context window for the LLM and again also to reduce the noise. So you want to only provide the relevant part to the LLM, not everything. Um, okay, so uh, the part that we like, this is what like um, the focus of this is um talking about vector databases a vector database or a vector store is a database that stores vectors of fixed length list of numbers along with other data items and um uh, when you like there are two uh, two things that are relevant to a vector database the creating the creation of the vectors which is the embedding and the other part is um the semantic uh or the similarity search Sorry, it's just what happened, but okay. Um, you can this is what you perform when you retrieve the, the relevant um, the relevant part for the query. Okay, uh, so just a little bit. So this is a vector store, like uh, the, like how it is used. So this is like you load your you remember like we loaded our data from whatever source it is. It was uh, transformed, chunked, split it, and embedded uh, into vectors, and uh, like uh, loaded into the vector store. Uh, how is this going to be used after that? Is that when you get a query, you have to embed the query in the same way that you embedded the data originally, yeah, and then you are going to compare, on um, like uh, do a similarity search. Uh, using this query um, on the data in the, in the vector store. And once you get the relevant information or relevant chunk or chunks, um, you add this to the query and you return it back to the, you, 
you gave that to the to the LLM. Okay. Um, okay. So this is like how it works. <coughs> All right. So um, just a little bit more detail about this. Uh, so just before I go go on, if there are any questions. Um, so far, am I going to go quickly or to slow? You can comment um, if you want. As always, you can just uh, unmute your mic and say anything you want. Um, okay. Sorry. Uh, okay, so just to say a little bit more about how data is vector, uh, vector I, um, is changed into vectors. Uh, this is what we call embedding, but like how it is created, the embeddings are, are different options. That that is the whole thing. Is that um, um, like yeah, let me stop here and say like why are why are we going through this? Why you are working about like how to to do this? If you go to like LinkedIn for example, website the documentation, you can find like a very quick. Uh, uh, a quick start like project on how to like build a rag or build a rag a chatbot and you can just use all what is provided as default or options they give you but the thing is that it's not only that you want to implement you always want to implement and improve and get better performance and to get better performance you have to know that you like to have to understand how it works so that you can understand like what other options you can do Options or, or things that you can do to, to in, in improve the performance, and to do that, you have to just have a understanding the method understanding you have about how it works, and the better for you to or the easier for you to actually try to improve the system. So, um, so just going into this, how to vectorize the data. So, um so this is the definition of the vectors themselves, a mathematical representation. They're usually very high dimensional, so it can start from like hundreds to like ten thousands. Uh, um, and the, this is the size of the array, depending on the complexity of the data. Of course, we, as we said, like the data can be words or sentences, entire documents or images or any other type of data. This all can be embedded into like vectors. Um, and the vectors themselves, how the embedding is created, this is also like a, usually it's a machine learning mo uh, method because, it, as I said, I emphasized before, the vectors are supposed to have to encode the semantic meaning of the data, and to get that, you usually use a machine learning method. So, um, for example, there are fish extraction algorithms. This is for like uh, generic uh, data. Um, like depending, but when it comes to language in particular, you can have word or sentence embedding, and um, uh, this can be created with either like machine learning, machine like uh, deep learning uh, um, um, networks, and in particular, it's uh, LLMs themselves or like uh, transformers. Um, so, like, uh, this is like the latest, like, state of the art, or like the best um, embeddings for um, language, for words or sentences, or like for documents, is uh, you can get from um, for from the LLMs embedding themselves. So the embedding it's it's how, how it is created. So this is just like about um, word embedding. So just in general, or like talking about, um, so the algorithm can be different, but um, so talking about word embedding is that you, you take each word and you create an embedding for that word. So it's, um, um, so it's just evident from the name. Uh, so how it's created is that like, um, you start like you actually, you have to train your model. It's like it's um, um, unsupervised, uh, uh, um, unsupervised learning. So you have a, a neural network, and you have a corpus of text. So it ha you have like a, 
like at the bigger the better probably and it, it has like um, a, a, a vocabulary of words and of course these words are actually in text so they are in sentences and they like come in a specific orders um so uh, what what you do is that like uh, like how is this for example this um this uh, embedding word to back is one example of word embedding and how it works is that you start with um a vector for each word so it can be like initialized uh, randomly but uh you want to like uh, you in the neural network you you train the uh, um the the neural network such that it will change or it will predict the right uh, the right vector to represent each word such that it um, maximizes the probability of having the corpus you had. So the vector what it encodes is encode is encoding like which word comes after which or the prob probability of a word appearing after a particular word. Okay, so. Um, these are the numbers and depending on the corpus you have um uh, it's like uh, it, it maximizes the probability that you can have this text so uh this is like this is a general idea i know that i'm saying that in words but it should like it's simple um the idea so in that you see you can see like you can understand in the end the, the vector you end up with is encoding in part like the meaning of the word or what words appear with what with with, with what which words other words yeah, uh, sorry other words <laughs> um and, and in a sense uh, in, in encoding the meaning of the words in, in that way in that way uh and a more complicated thing is that the sentence embedding and as i said is like the best embeddings that you can use are from llms so for example you can look at you have open ai embeddings um you can have like uh, the, the first one was bert of course um and these are and when you train the for like the vectors that represent a sentence because the sentence as you is does it's not just a word like here for word embedding that we're using like a bag of words so it's like uh we're taking just like all the words that are like appear in our vocabulary but here a sentence in a sentence what matters is the position of the word in it so a sentence is not defined by just the words that appear in it but also their order um so you have to keep track of like the the model that you train has to keep track of where the words are positioned and this is like the working like i'm not going to go into details about this because there is not enough time but um so basically the transformer um uh, uh, um uh, architecture or the components uh, how it is um uh, like uh, created or like how it is designed sorry is is designed such that it will keep track of like the order of the of the words and um so that when you like uh, it can train an embedding that uh we represent uh, like uh um is better representation for the meaning of the of a sentence not just a word um okay so these are just like a, a like a little bit about types of embedding and where they come from uh, so like uh, when you use a rag when you want to build like um, a use of vectors uh, vector database or vector store you have to choose an embedding and as i said of course like you can use an open ai embedding since you have an open ai key um they have multiple uh, uh, embedding models uh, and it depends on what kind of semantic meaning you're looking for. For example, if you are dealing with text, it's different if you are dealing with code. Um, the kind of of of, uh, of embedding, like some embeddings, are better for um, for for uh, for. Um, so there are okay. So there, there are like embeddings that work for everything, but like. Um, 
because it, it depends on how the embedding was created itself. So you have to keep that in mind. So in, in what, like what end you want to use in your embedding for. Okay. So this is just about the embedding itself. But then when it comes to the similarity search, uh, like um, usually like uh, just this is a, the, the vector databases usually Im implement uh, what is called like an approximate nearest neighbor. Uh, algorithm. So if you think about the K and an N, which is like uh, the K nearest neighbor, the, there are exact uh, algorithms, but these are approximate algorithms, of course, they are like um, they find in the vector space. Uh, the idea is that, uh, of course, the vectors that represent uh, your data or like the words or sentences, two vectors are close to each other if they are close in meaning. And so if you want to find the relevant if you have a query that you change it into a vector, you want to find the relevant relevant part of your data that is close in meaning to it or relevant to it. You want to find the, the vector that is closer to it uh, or like a couple of uh, or a few vectors that are close to it if you want to get a few chunks that are relevant to it. Uh, so what we want to look at is like uh, similar to search that is used like it uses like um, one of these like there are several um there are many approximate nearest neighbor algorithm like and these are like a few of them uh in general and how they just work uh i'm going to go into details on this like this is one of them it's most like you use hierarchical um navigable small world uh and basically it's just like breaks down your vector space into like it's a graph and then it's a network and then to find the to the, the the vector or the node that is closer um it starts searching from a, a particular node and then goes into like basically um it, it divides it divides the network into layers and goes from layer to layer to find the, the one i'm just like okay yes this is uh you can actually i think I link the paper to that if you want. If you are curious, you can read about it. But let's um, uh, move on to having like to looking at an actual example or like just an implementation of a rag. This is just um, a simple implementation. But uh, so far, is there any question? Anything? Yes, Hillary. So how do you compare with uh, the word embedding with? topic model it's like uh, because in the LDA I, I saw something like semantic uh, semantic search and similarity in words represents I, I don't know um okay so uh yeah so um so, sorry again so what is your question is there are related is that a question yes are they related are they different things uh uh the let's say like LDA is yeah are they different things like can we use for them in the same in the same context uh, so they are related of course uh but it's not exactly the same thing um uh topic model even though like you you are in in most cases you are looking at the semantic um you're coding the semantic meaning of the of 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 the words or um in documents in a way um and the uh, and how the uh, this uh, information is encoded or how how you train your model to do this is is um somewhat like the ideas are somewhat diff similar but then in in um in details as i said like even the embedding models are not all the same thing they are not all like um trained to because if you train it with um like uh, there are like uh, several methods to 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 train an embedding model depending on um the goal just let me give me a moment i want to let's look up the different embeddings in open ai uh
it's going to take me a, a, just a moment. So, Hmm. So yeah, so like um I can just like actually show you what I'm looking at in the moment. So so depending on the model, so all I looked at is like open AI embedding and uh embeddings, and you can see they have different embedding models, okay. And um, so, uh, depending on like, uh, like the data it was like uh, trained on, but also the use cases, and you can see like um, you can see like you can have the class the one that for text search is different from like the one that used for clustering. Um, I mean, the, there are sometimes like they actually think they they have models that works for both. But like the thing that in in and in, in the embedding that you want to use to look for um, for words uh, or for something that is uh, relevant is not necessarily the same as when you want to do a clustering. The what is like uh, the similarity you're looking for is slightly different in, in words. So the, how the embedding is trained affects this. Sometimes what ma matters is that it's only part of the training, not everything. And and I think in cases they mentioned that like um, some of the embeddings work for both. But I mean, what's important, uh, like difference is that, uh, of course, embedding for code is different from embedding for language, uh, just normal language. So anyway, so what I was trying to say is that um, how the, the embedding is trained in details affect what exactly it uh, like uh how bad how let's say let, let, let me say it this way how it's um, trained in details like for uh, like exactly the algorithm it's used is used the data it it uses as well uh, affect uh, like the kind of similarity it like how how good it's like encodes a kind of similarity or you're, you're you're looking for or like depending on the goal so does this make sense to you like and even like me myself like uh maybe it's not the best way to, to explain but uh yeah does it make sense at all yeah kind of it's it, uh, it yeah something yeah so uh, i would recommend like reading like this uh going through like this page maybe uh to explain a little bit um and maybe they also give like examples so you can you can look um read it to to get some more understanding about this um okay uh just to because there is not maybe not enough time but they just so looking at some code um right so okay so i had this okay oh god Right, so just one second, I have to give it permission. But I'm using Google Chrome. Okay. So here I'm using Langchain and OpenAI, and I'm using as uh, my uh, vector database, I'm using uh, Chroma DB. So I have to install all this. It's just a pip install. And I'm going to be using um, data. So I'm have, I have my OpenAI, but I also have like, I'm using data just, it's a CSV file from, um, um, from like, let me see if I have it here open somewhere. So just looking at it. So, uh, okay, so it's just a, a, a file that have like, um, from a business, it has like, a, um it has like information about like products is closing pro um products and the description of them so it's just like a, um just a simple uh csv file um 
okay so like i have like a blue shirt ocean blue shirt and then the explanation the so description is an ocean blue cotton shirt with a narrow of color blah 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 stuff like that so like uh, different products so this is like uh, i'm simulating like having um like a business and i want to answer like uh, to create a chatbot that will answer um user questions about this about my products okay so i'm going to be creating uh like uh using like um launching to 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 do this so the first step as you remember or as we mentioned before is that we're going to look to load our data okay so part of that is that we are going to um uh so here what we are choosing to do is that we are like um putting each row in a different chunk okay that that's like this is like the default but you can you can actually choose different chunking uh methods if you depending on like your data and what you want to do with it you can you have to like this is our options that you have you can change and um you have to think about and, and take and also you can change to improve your performance so the choice here like uh, for this is the default for a csv file is that uh, you, you load um row by row each row is a chunk by itself okay so um this is how it was loaded so okay uh Um, of course, uh, as I uh, hear, like, uh, I, I could, like, um, have broken down this even more or put them together if I wanted, but, like, uh, I'm choosing not to do that, but, okay, but just keep that in mind. Uh, the next part is to use an embedding, okay? So here I'm using, like, uh, OpenAI, OpenAI uh, embedding, so... Um, uh, just to look at how the embedding will look like. Um, so this is just simple. So if I have a query of this um, kind. For example, like my question is, list all the shirts made of cotton in a table um, in Markdown and summarize each one. So this is my query. I think like a user is asking this question. And then I want to embed that um and just to like see how it looks like so is the embedding um uh size is like uh 1536 so it's an array of a uh, 1500 uh, numbers and just like they are made of real numbers you can see here like this is the first five of them um so so this is just this is i'm showing you just the embedding but like we what we want is that we want to embed all the documents i created from before and store them in the vector database and to do that i have to use like uh, chroma is is one of vector data, database that is uh, like supported by Langchain, and you can look at Langchain um website you can find all these supported databases databases and of course there are differences on how they implement uh, how they use which kind of similarity search they use so that's what what matters what 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 is the difference between different vector databases for example one difference is that they use like because i'm using my own embedding but um you can um defining the embedding that's what i'm saying like but the similarity search it uses it differs from database to database so that's what you have to keep in mind and i will create at my database basically from the documents um and the embedding so these are the ones that i loaded and chunked in, in, in split it if i did a spe step but it's I like it. okay i already uh, split my data in by row by row i created documents um and uh, this is a long chain actual object. Uh, and then this is um, this is embedding, like the OpenAI embedding, and I'm going to just create the database from it, using that too. And um, once I have my vector database, I can perform similarity search using passing any, um, any vector. So uh, 
I can actually pass the vector or pass the, uh, the query as, as a string because I already like passed the embedding to, to my database. So it what will it do is I'll take this query, embed, use the embedding to change it into a vector, use um, the similarity search to find here, I I'm, I'm want to return the five most similar documents. So if you remember the query was about like cotton shirts. So we can see like, um, what kind of uh, documents we get back. These are the relevant ones. So I'm getting uh, row number 14, which includes uh, the white cotton shirt. Um, uh, it's like this is a product and the description is plain white cotton long sleeved sh a shirt with this color. So it is made of cotton as like I'm asking. Uh, let's look at the other ones, similar docs. So I'll ask for five, so I can, I have like up to five. Just like this, all of them, just to see. So you can see, yes, I'm getting the white cotton shirt. I'm getting this, another one is ocean blue shirt, which is an ocean blue cotton shirt as well. Having long sleeves cotton top. Um, and then I am having this, so which is a fan, uh, flannel shirt. Is flannel is cotton as well? And then I'm getting something that is like, uh, okay, strip skirt and top is also black cotton top. So I'm getting like uh, cotton um, tops uh, in my like relevant um, chunks. So it's kind, of, it's working. Of course, looking at what I get back the number of course i chose to return five but of course you can choose a different one and depending on how good you like uh, if this is actually relevant or not you can actually have there are different strategies to improve this if you are not getting what you want um but yes this is like uh, more details so this will get into later on just like um, to finish this so we got some um, our relevant and um answers uh, relevant chunks from our database. Uh, next is we can define the retriever. This is the one that. Um, uh, so instead of so I'm, here I was doing this by hand. I was like uh, taking my query, passing it to the database that I created, and getting the relevant chunks. But the retriever is going to automate that, so it's going to be taking query and returning them. So uh, returning this, uh, the relevant chunks and passing them to the generator. If I define the generator, so I define the retriever just with from the database. And this is like a long, all, all of these are long chain uh, functionalities. So here I define my, um, my generator. Uh, it's another open AI and I'm using it with temperature zero. Um, okay. So, um, so okay. So I'm, what I'm doing here is by hand, but like kind of in more steps. But of course, as you know, long chain provide all of this functionality where you can like build a pipeline and simplify all of this in a few fewer steps. But this is just to like um, to see what is working. So what we're going to do here is going to create a prompt from the relevant, the similar documents that we created and our query. So the prompt is going to be made from the, the like the relevant uh, documents that we retrieved and the question, which is the query that from the, so here I have my five products and the question which please list all the shirt made of cotton. And then, like, I can use this prompt to, like, um, I already did that, but um, sunny again. But uh, so all, so the LLM, all it has to do is just to list them in a markdown um, uh, format. And here it's displayed. Actually, I use it to, like, I display this with markdown, uh, and you can see, like. Um, so there is some mistake. Actually, it's not exactly correct. There's some mistake in how it was. It is represented. Um, but yeah, so it's giving me more or less what I asked for. Um, okay. So uh, here again, that we can use a chain 
instead of doing this by hand and just to see how it looks like what i have to do is i have to create a cage it's a retrieval question and answer okay from this is from long chain and what i have to pass it i have to pass it the the model has a pass the retriever uh, remember that SEO was defined with the vector database included, and the vector database was, was defined with the data, loaded with the data already. And um, so this is, uh, then all I have to do is pass the query to, um, to the, to the, to the, so I'm, um, um, I don't know, it's not defined. I didn't draw past something. Uh, sorry, one second. I'm looking not defined. Um, all right. Okay, is it's like um okay, doesn't matter here. I'm not gonna run it again. Um, uh, because there is a I'm getting an, an error, but like because I have to import okay uh -huh. yeah uh so what's happening here is that I'm going to have I have this cane already created all I have to do is to pass the query to it Okay, and you can see that I don't have to create a prompt with the, re the relevant chunk that were like as I did before. All I have to pass is the query. This chain is going to actually like you take my query, pass it to the retriever. The retriever is going to embed the query, look for similar chunks for it, and pass them to the LLM. And the LLM is going to generate. And you can actually see this in the because I'm I'm using the debug mode uh, to just see all the steps. Because like uh, if I run it without debug mode, I will just see the final answer. You can see here like the start of the chain um entering with the input which is a query and then you can see that uh it goes to the retriever q and a um and then uh getting back the relevant um information the relevant chunks that got them back from the database and then you can see that it created a prompt using the following pieces of context to answer the question at the end if you don't know the answer just play, say that you don't know and then it's going it's passing it the like the the relevant chunk and the question here in this, this the default is is using this one chunk i can see so um uh okay so you can see like like how it generated the answer here and uh, like uh so it's creating the output basically existing with output here so you can just see all the steps that are involved if i run it with without so this again um display sure it's, it was getting me one two three four Got me four, so it's not one. As I said, it's um, it can be one, two, three, and four. Four relevant chunks. That's why I created four. Um, given me a list of four. Uh, and of course, uh, like you can, like can change this um, default um, parameters um, depending on what you want. Uh, okay, so this is again, you know, was out of time. Of course, there are like uh, yeah, so there are part about evaluation, how to evaluate this system, the rack system in the to in a whole. You have to evaluate each component separately. You can evaluate the whole thing together. But like this is like the basic idea. You can see that you can write an actual rag in very few lines. Uh, but you to improve it, you have to understand how it works and you to understand like what different um, options you can change 
or you can like strategies you can employ as always so any questions was this clear or like uh, i hope that you got like some basic idea of the, the, the whole thing actually you should be like um understanding this more now because like you are yes hillary yes so can 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 the the okay can that be can, can that be used to make a conversation like a chat box yes uh, and uh, let's say the the, the the last last conversation yes so yeah you can you, you can create a conversation with it um of course and create a chat box that's of course uh, that's all the system this is just a rack system just a question and answer uh one question and answer that's right but if you remember last time we can we had um from like cane is it's very easy to to actually create a chat bot using employing the memory part um and the memory itself like there are different ways to to store and summarize like the history but um yeah we can create a chatbot using this of course you just have to include the memory memory part as well um in your chain um any other questions uh okay so um if no more no more questions um at the moment we can end this session here